Hi class, welcome to the next section, chapter 2.5. Today we're going to talk about linear functions and models. It's a really easy section, this will be a very short video. Basically this section is just word problems that have to do with linear functions. So back in chapter 1.10 I think we discussed all of these things that had to do with equations of lines. So we're really just going to talk about taking a word problem, finding out the equation that's linear for our equation, and then solving it. Okay. Um, so generally you want to kind of identify what it is that we're being given. So remember, um, in order to create the equation of a line, there's a couple of things we need. We either need an initial value and a slope, or we need a, and again, slope is a rate of change, um, or we need a rate of change and some generic point, um, so an input output, or we need two sets of inputs and outputs in order to find our rate of change and then find, use that with one of our points to plug in, right? So those are the three things that we need to create a linear function. So when we're given a word problem, that's kind of what we're looking for. We want to be able to identify, okay, this information tells me an input and an output. Um, this piece of information is a rate of change. Maybe it's saying for every one of these, we do this, or it costs this much per gallon, right? Things like that specify that it's a rate of change or a rate, okay? So for our first example, <clears throat> we have Rikaku and Vitor start at the same direction. Rikaku walks east at four miles per hour while Vitor walks south at three miles per hour, okay? They're communicating with the two-way radio that has a range of two miles. How long after they start walking will they lose radio contact? So again, we read this a couple of times and then we start to try to draw a picture, okay? So Rikako and Vitor start at the same intersection. They're at the same place. So to me, I would probably draw a dot, okay? Rikako walks east at four miles per hour so I can draw a line uh, to the right and label it with a four. Vitor walks south at three miles per hour, so I can draw that down, okay? Um, and label it with, with the three. So they're communicating with the two ray radio that has a range of two miles. So how long after they start walking will they lose radio contact? So their distance between them can be symbolized with a straight line, right? So the distance that Rikako has walked at the time of T, right? After T hours, right? Um, is given by R of T, which is four times T, right? If she walks for one hour, she's gone four miles. If she walks for half an hour, she's gone two miles, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll give it a capital R because her name starts with an R. Okay, the distance that Vitor has walked at time T is given by V of T. Again, I use a V because Vitor's name starts with a V. And he walks at three miles an hour, so very straightforward that it's 3t, right? So again, that's two linear functions. Um, from the point of intersection, Rikako walks east at this rate, so I can label it with this function. Vitor walks south at this rate, so that's his function. And the distance between them needs to be um, at least two miles. I'm sorry, at most two miles in order to stay in radio contact, right? So once they reach the distance of two miles, they can no longer talk, right? So once they go farther than that, there's no more communication, okay? So I need the distance between them to be two. So this is 3t, this is 4t, this is two. Um, I need to solve for t, so maybe I need to know how long they've been going, right? So I can use the information that I know about distance in order to figure this out, right? So I need to know when the distance between them is two, we have a formula for distance. So the distance between Rikako and Vitor is given by the square root of the sums of their squared functions, okay? So the distance, because I know that this is this length and that's this length, right? So their length is given by their value at t. So 4t squared plus 3t squared gives me 16t squared plus 9t squared, which is 25 times squared which is 5t, okay? I know 5t has to equal two. So when I solve for a time, that is two fifths. There we go, okay? 
Next example. Okay, so we have that a town's population has been going growing linearly. Okay. In 2004, the population was 6,200. And in 2009, the population had grown to 8,100 or 8,100. So A, we want to predict the population in 2021. B, in what year will the population be 15,000? In order to solve either of these, we need to find the function that models our population growth. Now, I know it's going to be a linear function because it's growing at a constant rate, right? It's growing linearly. So I need to use the information. So again, let's think about what we have. Um, we have basically two pieces of information. I have an input and output and a second set of input and outputs, right? So I have enough information for me to create a line 2004 as an input. Output is 6,200. 2009 as an input. Output is 8,100. Now, it would actually be a lot easier for me to think of time starting at 2004. Okay. So if I let T be the number of years since 2004 instead of the number of years since year zero, okay, this problem becomes a lot easier to solve. This point turns into 0, 6,200, which is way easier to work with than as 2004, 6,200, and then 2009 and 8,100, because now this is a y-intercept, okay? So all I really need now that I have my y-intercept, I have my b value, I just need to know the slope, okay? So 2009 is five years later. So I know that my slope is going to be 8,100 minus 6,200 over 5. Okay, That gives me a value of 380. That means that I can model this with 380t plus 6,200. So that will be my linear model that uh, models the linear growth of the population of my town. Right. <clears throat> so for part A, I want to know what the population is going to be in 2021. So 2021 compared to 2004 is 17 years later. So I let my t equal 17 and I plug it into my equation, my function. So everywhere I see t, I replace it with 17 and I get 12,660. So in the year 2021, that is what my population will be. Okay. B says, in one year will the population be 15,000? So I take 15,000 and I set it equal to my function value, right? My output for my function needs to be 15,000. So instead of writing f of t, that's what the output is going to be. So my output is 15,000. It's on the outside of my equation on the up opposite side. And I just solve for t. So I'm going to subtract 62,000 and divide by 380. Okay. Simplify that. I get 440 over 19 which is approximately 23.1579, so about 23 years after 2004. So what year is that? 2027. So in 2027, that's when I will reach a population of 15,000. All right, see you guys on the next video.